Ghost Coat Magazine welcomes in Rose of Black Rose Maze. How are you today? Hey, I'm fantastic. Thanks for having me. How are you doing? I am great as well. Thank you so much. Uh, considering this is uh, everything in the world, um, of course, I'm excited to talk about music and your career. I hope you're well. I hope your family's well. I hope all the artists you work with are well. This is just such an insane year. <laughs> I, I like to just check in personally first before we start talking about music mm -hmm. and and things because the human part of us doesn't stop existing just because you know the world is going on around us too <clears throat> of course i'm doing well um it was a little tough at the beginning but you know what you uh gotta find your balance and i'm uh super happy i did i was very aware of what was going on with me uh you know and uh i i'm i'm in a good place right now so i gotta give myself a Good job, Rosa. <laughs> it wasn't easy. <laughs> and self care is important. It's important yeah. to keep perspective. Um, you, we all see people around us kind of, you know, jokingly crumbling. And uh, you know, I try to check on my friends and myself. I, you know, I've had a couple of ups and downs, but I'm generally okay. And uh, mm -hmm. I stay busy. That's what I do. Of um, course. I'm sure you, you're working and you have this record coming out, your self-titled debut. Uh, I, I believe you had a previous record also, a uh, French language record. Um, but this is an, a fantastic record. It's coming out August 2nd on Frontiers SRL uh, label. We're very fond of Here It Goes Cold. So um, I know you have a really interesting backstory. Let's hear about kind of a, a, a nutshell origin story for Rosa and how you got started in singing. And I know you were on the Quebec version of The Voice and and now this album. So let's let's hear the whole story a little bit. Yeah, sure, I would love to. Thank you so much for your kind words, by the way. I just wanna make one correction. So the album's coming out August 7th. I, I think you said 2nd, so it was just the August 7th. Okay. And yeah, I, I did also have um, a French album release and I did actually record an EP. I wrote uh, and, uh, and released an uh, EP uh, in English a few years back, and that, which is really interesting because uh, two of the songs that were on the EP are now on the new album that's coming out in August. So it's something to check out. I just wanted to throw that in. But yeah, let me tell you a little bit about me. So I'm from an Italian background. I'm from Montreal, Quebec. And um, singing was always in the house. You know, my parents are excellent dancers. And everybody was, you know, really inclined to music, listening to, we, we grew up listening to a lot of uh, soul and funk, like Earth, Wind and Fire and George Benson. And my parents are really good soul dancers. And my brother too, he was like uh, John Travolta, Danny Zuko in Greece at school. And I was more into sports. I wasn't really like musically inclined, but I had my ears and I loved what I heard and what I saw. And it was a great feeling. And I went with the flow and you know, I remember going to watch the Village People when we were younger, the Jackson Five, uh, I mean, just to name a few, but we were always watching concerts here in Montreal and I loved it. So then at a later age, like uh, I think I was 19 or 20, um, I just uh, decided to go and sing a karaoke song in a, in a pub that was, had a grand opening. And uh, long story short, I instantly fell in love uh, with the energy with the crowd and the way I felt when I was singing and I was moving and everything was just like, like just effortless. And I was just like, what is this? What am I experiencing right now? So I became a karaoke pro because the owner of the, um, the company asked me to work with him. So for about seven years, I became, you know, the girl that all the club owners wanted. Could we have that girl karaoke DJ animator come in and do a show? Could we have that girl? So I was working six, seven nights a week and I sang, everything from you know english french italian pop uh, uh rock uh, jazz uh, I, I i went crazy because obviously everybody knows that the karaoke books have like thousands and thousands of songs so whatever was playing whatever was current whatever was on the radio i was singing it so i guess that's where i developed my my singing voice and my muscle <laughs> because honestly i think it's that i was literally singing seven days a week uh for a long time so um with all that being said after that after the karaoke um um, you know, era, uh, I was approached by a, um, uh, a music artist, a music, um, agent, uh, who asked me if I was interested to go to South America, to Asia in particular, and sing with a band. And I was like, wait, wait, wait a second, what is this? And so I did my homework and, and I realized that I wanted to do this. I, my gut feeling was like, oh my God, do it. Because I, 
I was always very open-minded and growing up, I was never like, I wasn't the normal, like, okay, go to school and then have kids and then get a house. I mean, sorry, go to school, get married, uh, you know, buy a house, have kids and all that stuff. I wasn't in, it wasn't in, in my, my dream or my future. Um, so I was like, oh my God, I could, I could travel. This is a great, you know? So I spoke to my parents, my poor, my parents really supported me a, a lot. So I did that Asian tour. And also in, um, in Dubai and uh, United Arab Emirates. And I did that for at least 10 years on and off, on and off. And then I finally said, okay, I need to stop now because, you know, eventually you become to, you, you, you want that routine. You want to settle down. You want to have a dog. You want to have a family. I wasn't really with the family thing, but it was more like, you know, I need to settle down. And so I did. And, um, and then I met someone and then let's fast forward. And then my friends and you know, boyfriend and family were like, why don't you go audition for the show and, and the voice? And I didn't want to audition because I'm, I was so comfortable in my little bubble and my routine. And I was really happy and I'm not a big competitor. Maybe I compete with myself, but, um, I don't like to compete, especially when it comes to music, you know? So, so I did, and I went in there for really for lots of fun and meeting. I made, I made incredible, uh, friends and, uh, and, um, you know, lots of great, memories and I never thought I'd make it to the finals so <laughs> I, I just I kept I was shocked I was like with so much talent and so there that that so so being on the voice the tv show was um it opened many 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 doors for me that was amazing so you know my lesson learned there was just go into things having a great time don't ever expect anything because I was really happy with my life the way things were going but it opened up a lot of doors and you know a lot of dreams came true for me so so there and then everything just you know started to like move super quick from there that's okay. amazing um <laughs> I, love the, I love the positivity i love that life lesson right there and uh had you told me that you trained all your life as a singer i would have believed you because your voice is really powerful Thank and you. uh you sound you know very schooled here and uh you you know i love karaoke karaoke rules uh dj animator was your uh, dj name that's awesome and uh, there's definitely video of me at the Revolver Magazine Christmas party, extremely drunk at karaoke. But <laughs> a former singer will tell you, oh, I'm, I love karaoke. And then it's yeah. like, well, this was a bad idea after too many drinks, but karaoke is awesome. And um, <laughs> personal story aside, karaoke is great. And uh, especially for rock and metal. And um, yeah, this album's fantastic. And what I, you know, I'm not surprised that you have like a really empowering story because I find a lot of the songs very uplifting and positive. And yeah, I was, gonna, and I figured that came from you clearly, like, you know, uh, let me be me and look at me now and you can't stop me. This is very energizing, empowering stuff. So I'm not surprised. Thanks. Um, and then, so the band you have that you work with here uh, is also amazing. These tracks are very, you know, very strong, hard rock, heavy metal vibe. And, uh, I, you know, I wanted to ask about, you know, sort of how you collaborate and, uh, you know, what's that process like? How long have you been writing these songs? Because again, this is your, as you said, now your third release uh, overall. So, you know, obviously a lot of time working on songs in the studio. Oh yeah, it's uh, my first full rock album. And uh, I definitely wanted to collaborate. I mean, some songs took me three hours. I remember writing, Let Me Be Me on My Kitchen Table. Another song I wrote at the beginning of tour with TSO and it took me a year to finish it. Uh, some songs were weak, some songs, it, it's just, it, it just depends. You know, the creative flow, you never know when it's gonna hit, you never know when it's gonna suck. I mean, you, you don't. So um, I'm a team player and I really wanted to collaborate with everybody. I feel that I get more inspired and more creative and. Um, you know, when I work with others and this, that was my goal for this album. I was very open to working with other people and welcome other artists and musicians. And, and I'm really, really, really happy about this album because, you know, uh, we have a song from Avril Lavigne's writer, Cliff Magnus, that was like, wow, that's awesome. The song is so not in my comfort zone, but it's like one of my favorites. And, uh, you know, we have two other songs from my EP that I wrote that are on this album. So that's, that's very validating, you know, just tells me, oh, I did a great job with my EP and they love the songs. I have a, you know, a duet with uh, Jeff Scott Soto in there. Uh, it's just a mix of everything. And I'm really happy because that's exactly what I wanted. You know, I really wanted to collaborate with other artists and, and Alessandro Del Vecchio, I mean, he's just a beast, you know, the producer, he plays every instrument and he's super patient in the studio, which is really important for me. And uh, um, yeah, I mean, everything, the whole, the whole album, it's, it's got so much like, 
so much, you know, beautiful moments and beautiful people in this album that I'm just, I'm so excited for it to come out. I just want everybody to hear it. <laughs> nice. Yeah, I, me too. I actually can't wait <laughs> to hear this too. Uh, yeah, I'm glad you mentioned the Jeff track, Laws of Attraction. The Jeff is wonderful. Um, I was wondering if you had met Jeff doing TSO. He is insane. And the track is fantastic. You guys are just Oh, perfect. thank you. Yeah, I can't wait for that release. It's, uh, yeah, the, the, as soon as... Um, the album was set to, to, you know, when we started to um, work on the album, the first immediate, my gut feeling was like, I want Soto on this album. And I just asked him and he just said yes. And I was like, whoa, I was, it, it was really, um, I'm humbled, you know, because he's a beast. Like, I feel like I'm his female version. He's like, he's got so much power and emotion in his voice. And, and I really, and our voices blend well. And, and when, he, when he sings and he projects, I mean, he's just like, just an amazing, amazing, amazing talent. So I'm really, really honored that he's on this album. Uh, and I, I couldn't have picked a better artist, you know, to, to accompany me with this song. Nice, yeah, he's amazing. I can't say enough good things about Jeff. And yeah. I'm a big TSO fan, so I, I was, I didn't want to take away from the album, but uh, I, I know your history with that project also, I love, all of TSO. I was a big fan of Paul. I love Chris and yeah. Jeff as well. Um, and I think TSO is a wonderful, like, you know, obviously they all, everyone that works with TSO is a first class, world class musician. So it says a lot yeah. about you. But also I see that a lot of people go from TSO to other things. So another like, you know, springboard for you to help this record and maybe yeah i mean i tso has become my family i can't believe it's already five years that i'll be with them and yeah i met jeff there uh, soto and i met also dino jalusic from animal drive who's my label mate that's also signed with frontiers i mean i mean there's so many people and and uh, such a talent is insane as well with tso and that's another part of my life where i'm just like in awe like i'm i'm you know who who gets a chance to sing in arenas and again this all comes uh you know they found me on youtube and uh and and you know and it's like if i wouldn't have been on the tv show i wouldn't have put any i wouldn't have started a youtube page so everything is all you know related you know it all began from that thought of me saying let me just go and have fun and be me and you know and we'll see what comes out of there <laughs> nice and I, I was going to talk about social media too i work in social media and i was aware of your youtube channel and uh youtube it's it seems like especially now with the quarantine and the coronavirus and everything a lot of artists are jumping on to streaming, but you've been there a long time already. So it's really cool that you've kind of cultivated a fan following for your stuff. Yeah, and, why um, not? I think, I think especially for singers and guitar players, YouTube is awesome because you can just, you know, throw up a song. And I like you already saying a couple of times about kind of getting outside of your comfort zone on this record and in other things. So that's really oh, amazing. Yeah. Yeah, it's a super important to get out of your comfort zone. It wasn't easy to be on YouTube, but I did it. And now I'm kind of getting used to the camera and singing to a laptop or, you know, on my phone. And <laughs> it's, it takes a, a practice. <laughs> I fully relate. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I never thought I was going to be on a bunch of YouTube videos interviewing nice. bands, but here I am. Um, yeah. And it's awesome. And uh, yeah, so uh, yeah, this album is very deep and uh, really well put together. Like I said, I alluded to the band, which you already shouted out. Um, do you have a, per a particular favorite track or a track that challenged you a lot, um, maybe more than you expected to record? Well, yeah, the challenging ones were the ones I wrote, you know, uh, In the Dark what really was, uh, that was the first single that was released in June. And I mean, the views are just insane. We have like over 175,000 views and it was a real hit. Um, it still is. People are still talking about it. In the Dark was the first song I wrote um, for this album that really uh, spoke about my past and I, I was in a deep, dark moment. I was um, in an emotional, verbally, verbally abusive relationship and, uh, and I never wrote about it before. So for me to actually write it and then when I had to sing it in the studio, it, it, it brought a lot of emotions up, but it, it was under control, you know, it's, it's fine. It's just that every time I listen to it, every time I listen to In the Dark, especially when the chorus comes in, In the Dark, I start to get like goosebumps and I, my hairs are like, I'm, I'm just, wow. And I, sometimes I tear, sometimes I don't because it just reminds me like you got out of it, you know, like good, 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 good for you and just, singing it and hearing it and sharing it whoa it's uh it's definitely healing for me so i think that in the dark is definitely the song that was the hardest and like for even to project like for like vocally but uh i mean there's a few on the album there's a few i have to say i have to be honest even the other two from my other ep 
again, same from, a, from my past and, you know, breaking free and coming out of that deep, dark, you know, hole that you're in. It's not easy, especially when you're younger. So now that I'm older and more mature and I'm in a completely different um, time in my life and I'm super happy and positive, whew, it's, uh, it brings up some, some emotions, you know. <laughs> right on, right on. Thank you for sharing that. First of all, I know it's not that's easy. True. And, you know, we are in a time right now where, for whatever reason, I think the political unrest in the world is empowering a lot of people to come yeah. forward with their stories. So thank you for sharing yours. Not easy to do. And uh, I'm very encouraged. Personally, I want to see all the creeps uh, in the music business. I have said for a long time, uh, I've used Ghost Cult as my platform to say that I don't think we quite had our full Me Too moment in the music business. And I think there's a lot of bad people out there not all guys are bad not all people are bad but just right. I think there's a lot it's been a lot of bad things abusive things cover-ups and things like that that haven't come out yet so I'm, right. I, I'm sorry that happened to you but I'm glad you were able to share it now Thank um I, I wonder how that's good you know like uh I can put myself in your shoes I can imagine it might be we're not ready to have shows yet just yet I don't know how uh Montreal or Quebec are doing but um yeah, it might be difficult to perform some of those live too, huh? And in the, it's such a, I'm sure everyone wants to hear yeah. it now because it's a big- Oh yeah, oh yeah. It, it, I mean, I don't think it'll be, I think I'm just gonna be more intense. Like I'm already intense live. For, for me, live is where it happens. Like on stage is where the magic happens. You know, like that's where my intensity comes out. And I just, I come and get all your insides and your body and just rip them out, literally. Like that's, that's me performing. So I think it's just when you're, when you're on stage and you're in the moment and I start to feel and sing, it's like, it's, I'm just going to explode. Oh my God. It's going to be crazy. I uh, hope soon. <laughs> nice. Yeah, of course. We all want to get our uh, lives back and go back to shows. Um, I love hearing that also because yeah, uh, you know, a lot of artists can make the studio album live is definitely where it happens for, for me as a fan and an, a former artist. Yeah. And so I you know, love hearing your passion about uh, performing. That's amazing. And, uh, and I don't, not a lot of people can do it, actually. I think there's something to be said uh, to put a premium on being able to do it in a live environment. You know, the studio can cover for a lot of things. I often say that about guitar players. Like electric guitar can disguise a lot of mistakes. And a vocalist has nothing to disguise their mistakes, you know, ever. Yeah. So, sure. yeah, you have a really... That's a great take. I, I can't wait to see you live at some point. Get back down down here to North America or Southern North America. I don't know. Yeah. New York City <laughs> and, uh, you know, the States. And uh, yeah. we'd love to see you do your thing in clubs and theaters. Because, I you know, uh, I've, I've, I saw the last, I've seen the last couple of TSOs and then one a while back. So, um, yeah, I don't know what you, I actually was just talking with a friend, a peer and a friend of mine about that. Like, I you know. They do so much wonderful work and a, a big giant production like that. I don't know how it, how it can happen. I'm sure it's a concern. Maybe we'll be reopened by then and we can have those shows. But having attended them, I was at Newark in December in uh, New Jersey. And uh, yeah, I can't imagine how we can have that many people in a place like that right now. But I, the, the work that TSO does and the work that bands do bringing, you know, music to fans is like, we need it. We need mm -hmm. it too. So it's hard. Sure. For sure, yeah, no, there's no news about TSO yet, so just wait. Right, of course. <laughs> of course. Yeah. Oh, I know Camfrey will tell everybody as soon as we come <laughs> Of course. Him. That guy is great, and he can't, uh, you know, you can't shut him down. <laughs> <laughs> For sure. You can shut the world down. You can't shut Chris down. Um, <laughs> and Chris is another one. Chris is in like 85 bands. I love that guy. Um, I know, right? <laughs> I know. Um, but yeah, so um, yeah, this is really fantastic. The album is great. The artwork is great. I love the cover. Kind of reminded me of the old Frank Versetta Kiss albums, except like obviously with you know you perhaps on the cover. Interesting. Yeah, I like and, that. And then, like the Ken Kelly and Frank Frazetta and stuff like that, nice. like the classic heavy metal and rock album artwork. It's very right. again it's very compelling it, go, it yeah. all works together you know that's I, great I like, that's great that's good thank you i appreciate that because i wasn't too sure with the album cover but i then i, I kind of you know i mean when it first came out the the hair was blonde and i'm like i know it's not me but if it was to be me you gotta change her hair oh there's yeah. my dog poking in i meant like oh yeah bring the dog in let's go yeah I she's fine them. she's just i'm petting her she's uh <laughs> stuck all good to me. yeah of course oh we've had videos with cats dogs whatever birds whatever. <laughs> It's all good. We like all the animals here. Um, yeah, that's amazing. And, um, you know, of course, uh, it's interesting, uh, you know, sometimes you have to let go too, as much as you want to be a, you know, an artist and this is your vehicle, of course, all about you. And, uh, 
but of course, sometimes you do have to let some things go. And I'm sure that's hard, right? Because you want to be in control of your image and you want to have, to, you know, I, I know it's hard for me to let go of aspects of certain things that I try to be, you know, I'm in charge of, but you know, it's interesting to hear you talk about kind of letting go a little bit. Yeah, you have no choice. You just have to be open-minded. You know, I mean, things change and it doesn't always have to be your way. And I, like I said, I, I, um, I, like my goal in life is to work with others. Like it's, it's, I, I love collaborating. So if we're a team, we're a team. Like I was a hockey, I'm a hockey player. I played hockey for 25 years. I still do. And I just am a team player. You know what I mean? Like whatever uh, comes out, I like uh, having other people's opinions and, you know, I'll ask my husband, what do you think? And my friends or whatever. At the end of the day, of course, I'm going to do what makes me happy, but it's nice to have other input and, you know, and, and it's always good to hear everybody out as well because they have a different perspective and they see something in a different, you know, in their eyes. And, and so you get the best of everything and then you just do what makes you happy. And I, and I can't, you know, it's, uh, the album cover for me is like, wow, it's so different. It's so amazing. And you know, it's just the, the first of four albums. So who knows what, you know, maybe the, the story is going to follow and I have to keep an open mind. So that's what we did. And I'm uh, really, really happy with it. It's, it's, it's really great. It's deep. It's, uh, it's rock. <laughs> I, felt, I felt that too I felt that I felt like it was yeah. you know very many layered on on repeated listens yeah. um, I love hearing about uh you being a hockey player do you have a favorite hockey player ever um well I mean I, we're we're I'm from Montreal Quebec and uh the uh Montreal Canadian fans here in Montreal are the craziest uh like on the planet uh we're very intense about hockey so and right now it's got to be Brendan Gallagher from the Montreal Canadiens he's uh He's, he's my number one, but I mean, growing up, I was in love with Gretzky and, you know, uh, I, I always, I used to, I think I used to, I used to carry his uh, jersey a lot with me uh, back in the day, but now I'm more of a Montreal Canadian hardcore Habs fan. <laughs> yeah. Very good. I will not embarrass myself with my terrible French, but I uh, always have respect <laughs> for the Habs. I'm a Rangers fan from New York, of course. Nice. So we had our one year. And maybe another couple of decent years, and that was it. I got to see Gretzky play as a Ranger, and uh, nice. even he was at the end, but it was still awesome. It's too yeah. bad we didn't get another ring for him, but uh, That's cool. Yeah, we had like all the Edmonton guys at one point. I mean, you know, it's kind of funny, but um, it was like Edmonton East. <laughs> ah, that's funny. Obviously, aside from working on music, what else have you been doing beside hockey and music? What have you been doing to just kind of keep yourself occupied during uh, these current times? Oh, I'm just outdoors a lot. I, um, I need to be outdoors. I need to feel grounded. I, um, I'm into boxing, yoga, walking my dog, running outside. Uh, I started a project where I'm taking, um, a dresser and I'm, uh, I'm changing it. I'm uh, sanding it. I'm going to paint it a different color. Um, so I just want to get creative here with my hands and get lost in like the outdoors and, if I'm, you know, get a paint or something, it's, it's just what I need to feel grounded. It's really, really, really important for me to, uh, to, to step aside and just kind of let go of the, you know, the social media and the pressures of all this COVID-19 and uh, pandemic. And I don't even watch the news anymore. I was, I'm not a TV person at all, but I just kind of stay uh, with what makes me feel good, you know, cook some healthy meals, you know, just self-care really like times 10, you know? <laughs> yeah. Uh, Rosa, thank you for sharing your story with us. Super pumped about the debut album for Black Rose Maze. And, uh, I wish you the best of luck. I'm going to follow you from here on out very closely and see yeah. what we can keep making. Thank Likewise. You. Thank you. I'm glad we had this connection and I hope that we can, uh, you know, ne you never know, like I could see you at a show one day, mine yeah. or yours and uh or txo or whatnot so keep in touch you know stay in touch and i and uh, thank you so much for having me and and uh you know for listening and taking the time i really appreciate it my pleasure thank you so much take care merci beaucoup <laughs> all right take care rock on